Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio and welcome to another Let's Make a Tower Defense in Unity tutorial. Last time around, we got a health bar set up on our tower so that we could see the progress as it slowly loses health. However, it still isn't looking quite right. In this video, we're going to set things up so that our graphics actually change as it takes damage to show different states. Let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need is just a couple of new sprites to go in place of the tower that we have normally. I've got a couple of such sprites, one where the tower is just slightly damaged, one where it's damaged a little further, and finally one where it is just rubble. I'm just going to head into my sprites folder and drag those three sprites into there. Now there's not a lot of steps to this one, but we are going to throw some serious math at it. So let's start by diving right into our scripts folder, where we can open up tower health. This time around, we're going to have a couple of lines of code to write. The first one, we're just going to head right up to the top here where we're going to make a public sprite array. And we'll call this one Tower Sprites. I'll just to give you an idea how that works, we can now click on our tower. And in Tower Health, you'll notice there is this new Tower Sprites with a drop down menu. If I go into my Sprites folder, I can now grab those three towers and drag them up here into the sprite. There's one other thing we're gonna have to do while we're here, and that is we're gonna have to get access to our sprite renderer, which is what makes the image appear right now it's set to tower. We want our sprite renderer to change the image to each of these depending on our damage. So for that, we're gonna make yet another public reference. This time though, it's gonna to be to the sprite renderer itself. I'm just gonna call this one tower SR. Back in Unity now, we've got a box for our tower sprite renderer, and I'm just gonna grab that renderer, drag it right into there. All right, now that we've got our sprite renderer and we've got the images that we actually want it to be showing, let's actually do some coding. So if we head down to our update method, at the moment if our health gets to zero, we destroy our game object and slider. But let's make an else statement here. So if our health is not at zero, what we wanna do instead is update our image. Now I'm gonna make a variable down here that is a float called health percentage. This time we're making something called a local variable. This will only actually be usable within our update method, not anywhere else. And the way we're going to get this is to make a float conversion. All this little method here does is make it so that whatever follows gets converted from an integer to a float, which we need to do since our health is an integer. And to find a percentage, we're just going to get our health and divide it by our max health. This will give us a value between 0 and 1. Because this script is starting to get a little more complex, I often like to add notes. You can do that by adding two slashes. And I'll just say convert health to a value between zero and one. Now that we've got our health percentage, there's two things left to do. We need to figure out which sprite we want to display. This will be one from our list, either zero, one, or two. And finally, we want to display the appropriate sprite in place of our tower. This next part is where we're really gonna throw some math at this thing. Let's start by making another local variable, an integer called sprite index. And in this case, zero would be our first sprite in the array, one the next one, etc. The way we're gonna find this is we're gonna take our health percentage and actually multiply it by the length of our sprite array. So in my case, three. Now we'll just put that multiplication statement into brackets here for safekeeping. And let's look at how this works. So let's say our health percentage was 0.2 or 20%. We would multiply that by the three sprites in our array and it would get us 0.6. Because this is in the zero range, it would display sprite zero. The problem though at the moment is that we're getting 0.6 instead of zero as our result. And our integer for the sprite index needs whole numbers. Here we're gonna use a math function to the rescue. And the one that we wanna use in this case is called floor to int. And all this does is round down the result of our calculation to the nearest whole number. All right, I know that got a little mathy there, but we are almost done. All that's left now is to actually make it so that our tower sprite renderer, which we made a reference to earlier, actually displays the appropriate sprite. We'll do this by simply making it equal to our tower sprites array. And then in square brackets, we just say the number of the array that we want to display. In this case, that's represented by our sprite index calculated on the previous line. All right, let's try this out. At this point, we are almost there, except that there's a couple of problems remaining. First, if I take my health down to say 40, you'll notice the tower gets damaged, but it went all the way to rubble in one step. That's largely because my array is in the wrong order. My most damaged should actually be up at the top here and my least damaged down at the bottom. Additionally, if I pump my health back up to 50, the tower doesn't actually repair itself. And that's partly because of the fact that I actually don't have my fully healthy tower in this array. So I'll need to add that element. 
So I'll just quickly add my fully healthy tower to the list and then reorder it so that it goes in order from the most damaged down to the least damaged at the bottom. Things are actually deteriorating in the correct order. However, we're still running into the problem where at full health, it's not repairing itself. This brings us to the other problem. You'll notice there are a lot of error messages popping. They're pointing to line 35, saying that the index was outside the bounds of the array. And this is all happening whenever our tower is at full health. Now the error points to this line here, which is looking at our sprite index. And what's happening is that when our health is at full, it's trying to find a number that isn't actually in the array. You can see this happening because say our health is at full, the percent would be one, and we multiply that by four sprites. The answer would be four, which would want to display sprite number four, except that that doesn't exist because our array only goes from zero to three. We can partly solve this problem by just adding a negative one here. This will make sure that the high number when our health is at full actually goes to three instead of four. But now we're gonna have the opposite problem. When our health is very low at zero or even at one or two or three, it's gonna calculate and take one away, putting us at a negative number, and there's no negative numbers in our array. So this time we're going to need a, another math function to the rescue. This time we're gonna use a math function called a clamp, which just clamps the number we're calculating here between a minimum and max point. In our case, we want the lowest point it ever goes to to be zero. And our highest point is just going to be the number of items in our array minus one, which accounts for the fact that arrays start at zero. With that little tweak, we should at last be ready to go. Now we're just gonna test this in action with actual enemies running into the tower. You'll notice with each hit, a little more damage happens. Excellent, that's so much more satisfying than before. All right, it's time we actually learn to defend this tower. In our next video, we'll get this defender over here actually firing some projectiles so that she can defend our tower. But we'll get there in the next video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.